Cards. Two, two. Comedy. Inspiration. These are but a few of the aspects world-renowned card mechanic Richard Turner, the cheat, has to offer your event. This is the fancy way of cutting an ace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, back in the days of Pharaoh, they could actually take the cards and lace them up every other card. Red and blue. Now that's a much more difficult method of shuffling a pack of cards. Now the most difficult <laughs> shuffle <laughs> to work with is to take the cards and shuffle them around. <laughs> now I've shown you a half a dozen ways of shuffling and cutting the decks. They should be very well mixed. Let's see how evenly mixed these cards are. Do we have here all red? Yeah. Do we have here all blue? Yes. Now let's see what they look like on the opposite side. <laughs> I want you to know we have all the aces, all the twos, all the threes, all the fours, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Whoa. ten jacks, queens, and kings suited. <laughs> and on the back side of the blue deck, we have all the aces, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh -huh. ten jack, queen, king, all suited. Whoa. Thank you. <laughs> General, would you give me a quick shuffle, please? One last thing. When those, gam when those gamblers would play cards, they would always like to cut for the high card at the end of the night, and the card you want to develop a touch for, what's that card, General? Ace of spades. What's that card? The ace of clubs. What's that card? Ace of hearts. And I'll uh, cut one more card right out of the middle, and that is? Ace of diamonds. Now, one, here's something you never do when you play cards for money. Never triple cut the deck with one hand, and give the deck a one-handed backflip. When you do, it makes the other players nervous. <laughs> now, when they see you shuffle with one hand, they get up and run away. Another number, John. Uh, uh, two. One, two. <laughs> one more number. Four. How about seven? Okay. How about... How about seven? A stud center. One, yep. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out of the middle to your selection. Thank that you. is unbelievable. That's great. I hope you all really appreciate these two gifted people who came and shared this with you today. Mr. Cheap and Miss Guided. They are the real stars. Thank you. Richard's card playing skills have been admired around the country. On a CBS interview, the 90-year-old living legend of cards and magic, Di Vernon, said, this man here, Richard Turner, he does things that nobody else in the world can do with cards. Nobody. I don't care if you go to China or France or Germany. He does things that nobody else can do. He does them beautifully. But as I say, that's very rare. Michael Skinner, the Golden Nugget Casino, Las Vegas. You deserve your reputation as the most skilled card cheater in the world. From the San Antonio Express News, it's not hard to see why Richard Turner is regarded worldwide as the greatest card mechanic, living or dead. It's not easy to see what Richard does with the cards. He can shuffle the deck numerous times using various methods only to have the deck turn out in perfect numerical order. He can deal winning hands to any player, a patron selection, a mock poker game. And don't try your luck against him in three-card Monty. You'll never be able to follow the ace. Two twos. Boxing legend Muhammad Ali. Richard Turner is the greatest card mechanic of all time. Though legally blind, Richard Turner has been called the greatest card mechanic in the world. His unparalleled touch with a pack of playing cards has been written about and featured on TV specials around the globe. Richard has performed for numerous corporations, Southwestern Bell Corporation, Arco Chemical, USAA, and Southwest Airlines, to name a few. Richard has been privileged to entertain legends such as Muhammad Ali, Johnny Carson, Gene Kelly, and Bob Hope. Along with comedic partner Misguided, Richard Turner has spoken at prestigious events like the 42nd Annual National Security Forum at Maxwell Air Force Base, the Defense Intelligence Agency, Bowling Air Force Base, and at a special event with Secretary of State General Colin Powell. 
Because of his community involvement, Richard has received many acknowledgments, including the FBI Director's Community Leadership Award, Rotary Leadership Award, Honorary Commander, U.S. Air Force, Honorary Naval Flight Officer, Magic Castle Hall of Fame, Hollywood, California, and the Golden Lion Award from Las Vegas' famed duo Siegfried and Roy. Topics in Richard's speech include honesty, integrity, loyalty, perseverance, overcoming obstacles, and what it takes to become the best. The Richard Turner, The Cheat Story began when Richard was seven years old. After watching the TV show Maverick, Richard set his mind on becoming a world-class card magician. However, at nine years old, Richard's dream hit a setback. A disease destroyed the retina of his eyes, causing him to go blind. Richard, one of the things that's really curious to me is you, you can't see these cards. No, it's all by touch, 100%. When I was nine years old, I caught a disease that caused the retina of my eyes to degenerate, and I have no macula, and my, the rest of the retina, they call it shotgun. It's like someone took a shotgun and blew it all apart. So I have to do it all by touch, which is a real blessing. So you can tell what these cards are just by touching oh. that card? By touching the card, I can do anything I want with those cards. I also came up with a great idea for the blind and deaf driver. I bought a Honda 350. I had a friend who was deaf. I would drive, he'd tell me where to go. <laughs> it worked really well until one day we were pulled over for armed robbery. Now we fit the profile exactly except for two minor details. The getaway driver wasn't blind, his partner wasn't deaf. That was 30 years ago and I've calmed down a little bit since then. Not to be outdone by this tragic obstacle, Richard began creating his own opportunities. Through discipline and perseverance, Richard has struggled to develop his mind and body in order to compensate for the loss of sight. Invented a series of board and card games. Produced a comprehensive video series on card table artifice that is used by magicians and casinos around the world. Earned a fourth degree black belt. <laughs> What do you think about when you're in the ring against that many guys? I hope my wind holds up because if you go 10 three minute rounds, it's not like a boxer. A boxer, you know, this is the same guy getting tired. This is a fresh guy every round and it's rough. Now, now the final point you're legally blind. Yeah, and I don't see very well either. Well, how could you possibly fight? I don't know. Find out. <laughs> Sit and watch. Richard's blindness brought about a heightened sense of touch, a touch so sensitive he is on retainer with the world's largest card manufacturer as their touch analyst. As long as they stay on the table. Oh, there we go. It's the old-fashioned way. And a cut. Very good. Random card shuffled in by Ian. Ian, I'm going to try cutting a card from the center of the deck. Ian, what was your card? Eight of hearts. Are you sure it was an ace of hearts? Eight of hearts. Eight of hearts. What is that? Eight of hearts. <laughs> Eight of hearts. <laughs> Richard's touch is so amazing, it has been highly featured in major newspapers across America. From the Los Angeles Times, they are remarkable hands. Hands any surgeon would be proud to affix to his or her wrists. Hands that unerringly pluck the aces from the deck and have made him one of the world's greatest card dealers. The Orlando Sentinel. He can deal a full house, four aces, whatever you want, and make it look as if it were all a coincidence. He'll even let you cut the deck, shuffle the cards, deal the hand, and he'll get a full house. Over there. I've got three nines. Three nines is a wagering hand. That's right. So I've already bet on mine. What you got over there? I've got four kings. The Dallas Times-Herald. Richard Turner has a feel for cards. 
Ask him to cut 28, and he casually picks off exactly 28. It's all done by feel. 10, 11, 12. 12 times, yeah. I will say 19. Twenty-one. Try that. That feels like twenty-one. Seventy. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. And twenty-one. Huh? Is that good? Is that good enough? Richard's touch was sought after by many of the organized crime families who pursued him with million-dollar offers to cheat in high-stake poker games. Richard shares how he was trained and armed by the police department to protect himself. Richard shares on how he became a success honestly living up to traditional values and refusing to use his skills for unethical or illegal purposes. And because of this next series of events, I was actually trained to use firearms by Chuck Curtis, the captain of the San Diego SWAT team. I was flying to a performance. The stranger in the seat next to me lowered his paper and said, Hello, Mr. Turner, I'd like to talk to you about doing some business together. I was a little startled, but that was just the beginning. This character would be waiting for me in restaurants. He knew about my family, my personal likes and dislikes. He would call me on private lines when I'd be a thousand miles from home. He told me how it cost him $400,000 to buy off a judge for a murder he had committed. He gave me the business and private numbers of Johnny Carson, suggesting I might like to be on The Tonight Show. The police search determined the numbers were legitimate. He even tried to give me a five-carat diamond ring just to show his good faith. However, the most frightening moment came when he offered to have my wife or anyone else murdered he said it would be an accident. No one would ever know. Now, he said and did all these things with the intention of trying to either entice or intimidate me into accepting his $300,000 offer to cheat in high state car games in South Africa. Inspiration, motivation, or just amazing entertainment, Richard Turner can provide any or all of these for your event. Your clients will laugh, be amazed and inspired in a way rarely experienced. Your management will have many new springboards for inspiring discussions. Richard Turner can entertain table to table, in intimate arenas, or as a motivational speaker or performer using video projection. Your contact can give you entertainment options and prices. This isn't just incredible. This is enough to make a poker player want to take up Scrabble. <laughs> Hello, my name is Richard Turner. Welcome to my series on card cheating. Hundred plus years ago, if you were to sit down to a game of poker, unless of course you were a better cheater quick with a gun, the one thing you could bank on is when you got up from the table, you would have nothing to bank. You can be sure you were a pigeon whose wings had been clipped. Unfortunately, card players today are under the misconception that cheating died with the Old West. The fact is, millions of dollars are stolen from honest and ignorant players via some form of card table artifice. Now the gambler's prayer reads, Oh Lord, please help me break even. I really need the money. So if you find yourself more times than not coming out on the short end of the stick, you can bet you're someone's sucker. Well, that's what these tapes are about. I will be exposing many techniques used by the amateur and professional cheater. Even better than a derringer up your sleeve, knowledge will be your best defense. So as you view the various techniques, watch them over and over, even practice them, not to cheat, but to familiarize yourself. So if you see or suspect their use, you may wish to consider cutting your losses and finding a new game. Before I begin, please understand, this is not magic. These cards are not shaved, marked, or gaffed in any way. In other words, what you are about to see can be done with your cards in your game. Let's get started, shall we? We'll begin with false shuffling. A cheater can gain a great advantage in games like Casino and Gin Rummy by controlling or knowing the position of just one card. If he controls a small group of cards, so much the better. For easy identification, the various techniques shown throughout this tape will be labeled with playing cards. 
The overhand shuffle is still very commonly used in private games. This method is an easy way of retaining one card on the bottom of the deck. Watch the left hand. The fingers merely pull down the bottom card as the rest of the deck is shuffled, giving the dealer control of the ace of spades. Watch it again from a different angle. You can see that the bottom card is never shuffled. This is another overhand shuffle, this time retaining a small group of cards on the top of the deck, in this case, the four kings. As the first group of cards is shuffled on top of the kings, it is slightly in-jogged. The cheater uses that like a bookmark to retain the position of the kings. It's easier to see from the cheater's angle as he puts his thumb at the in-jog point and holds the kings to shuffle them back to the top of the deck. The rest of the cards in the deck are legitimately shuffled. The cheater has the four kings on the top of the deck. This time, watch as the cheater combines the ace of hearts and the king of hearts methods, retaining three queens on top of the deck and the fourth queen on the bottom. His left hand pulls down the bottom queen with the three queens from the top. The next group of cards is in jog, so the cheater can find the queens with his thumb as he squares the pack to shuffle again. As he does, he pulls the bottom queen to the bottom of the deck again and shuffles the rest of the deck legitimately until he gets to the three queens he is holding apart with his thumb. They go on top of the deck. Here again, the cheater will keep control of a group of cards on the bottom of the deck with an overhand shuffle. In this illustration, he is controlling the four jacks. As the cards are picked up to be shuffled, they are simply taken from the center of the deck and shuffled to the top, leaving the four jacks on the bottom. It's often to the cheater's advantage not to look proficient with cards. The more amateurish that he can make his moves look, the less chance he will be suspected of cheating. In private games, it's not unusual to find people shuffling cards back and forth, from the top to the bottom of the deck, in a chop shuffle. This makes it simple for the cheater to retain a small group of cards on the bottom of the deck. With the tens on the bottom of the deck, he shuffles the deck honestly and merely makes his last shuffle bring the tens back to the bottom. Even if he shuffles the deck several times, each time he returns the bottom cards to the bottom of the deck. This same shuffle can be used to retain the entire deck in its order, not shuffling a single card. This time, as the cards are shuffled, the cheater only appears to be dropping them to the front. The truth is, he only shuffles them to the back of the deck, putting them back in the exact order they were in at the start of the shuffle. It's easier to see close up, and we slow the shuffle down. 
see that the cards are merely placed in front of the deck and then taken away, never dropped into place. So when the shuffle is complete, not one card is out of place. This time, using an overhand shuffle, the cheater will retain the order of the entire deck. It looks like a very normal, legitimate shuffle, but with a series of in-jogs and out-jogs, the cheater is keeping track of every card. Watch closely, in slow motion. The first group of cards is dropped into the left hand. On the next five passes, the left thumb pulls down just one card at a time. Half of the remaining deck is then dropped and in-jogged, and the rest of the cards are then dropped and out-jogged. For our purposes, the in- and out-jogs are greatly exaggerated here. On the next shuffle, the out-jogged portion is kept in the left hand, and the right thumb maintains a break separating the in-jogged cards. They are then dropped onto the left hand. The thumb pulls down five cards, one at a time, in the next five passes. The remaining group of cards is then dropped on top, putting the entire pack back in its original order. This time, the cheater will appear to shuffle the cards overhand in blocks. And wedge a block of cards into the center of the deck, all while not shuffling a single card. This is another good opportunity for the cheater to look like an amateur. With the left hand, the cheater pulls down one third of the deck. The second third is in jogged, and the last third is out jogged. Picking up the deck, the cheater maintains the two in and out jogged points with his right thumb and right middle finger. The out jogged third is dropped, followed by the in jogged third, and then the bottom third is returned to its original position on top of the deck. Then, picking up half the deck, the cheater pushes up the top card into his left hand, and while appearing to wedge the cards into each other, he actually just moves them behind that single top card. Before the deck is squared, his left thumb comes over the top, holding the break. Taking the bottom half of the deck, he again appears to wedge it in while merely replacing it behind the top card again. The deck is again back in its original order. The shuffle is again completed as it began with two more overhand shuffles, in thirds with in-jogs and out-jogs. In some casual games, it's not uncommon to see people shuffle while exposing the faces of the cards. This is an open invitation to the cheater to cull desired cards to the top of the deck. In this case, five face cards have been brought to the top of the deck. As the cheater spots a desired card, he in-jogs it with the left thumb. The right hand then picks up the deck behind the in-jogged cards and continues to shuffle. The procedure is continued until the desired cards are all at the top of the deck. Once the cheater has his deck shuffled to his advantage, he wants to show that he can cut the deck. But he has to do this without changing the order of his cards. With the ace of hearts on the top of the deck, 
and the ace of spades on the bottom, the bottom third of the deck is cut to the top with the right hand, followed by the center third with the left hand, and finally the top third with the right hand. From the cheater's angle, and with the ace of hearts face up, you can see that as he brings the bottom third to the top, he maintains a break with his right thumb. This lets him put the second third on top and the bottom third back on the top of the deck. This is essentially the same false cut, but the cards are dropped from above. The first third is cut from the bottom of the deck with the right hand, and the break is held with the right thumb. As the middle third is cut with the left hand, the deck is lifted, and the original bottom third is dropped to the table with the right hand. The left hand replaces the middle third and the top third is placed back on top. This is an honest method of cutting the deck. There is no cheating here. Small groups of cards are taken from the top of the deck and cut down to the table. This looks the same as the honest Queen of Clubs cut, but it's a deception. The cards aren't cut at all. What the cheater actually does is cut the cards in small groups from the bottom of the deck, merely putting them back on the table in their original order. This cut will retain a small group of cards on the top and the bottom of the deck. In this case, four kings on the bottom and four aces on the top. A small group of cards is taken from the top of the deck and dropped on the table. The next cut is from the bottom of the deck, and those cards are dropped off-center on top of the first cut. The rest of the deck is honestly cut from the top of the deck. The break is retained at the off-center point as the deck is squared and cut once again at that point, bringing the four aces back to the top and leaving the kings on the bottom. This technique will allow the cheater to retain a small group of cards on top of the deck. This cut could be used after the King of Hearts false shuffle. A portion of the deck is cut to the table and the cheater drops the next group of cards off center to the right. He continues to cut small groups of cards in honest cuts until the deck is completed. Then as the deck is squared, the right thumb retains the break at the off center point and the deck is cut there bringing the four aces back to the top. This is simply a way of retaining the full deck order as the cheater did with the eight and nine of hearts shuffles. With the right hand, one third of the deck is cut to the top and the left thumb maintains a break there as the right hand cuts another group of cards to the top. On the last cut, the cards below the break are brought back to the top. This is a complicated false cutting method that is very difficult to detect. One fourth of the deck is cut from the bottom with the right hand, and as it's placed on top, 
the left thumb holds it slightly above the deck. The full deck is then cut in half with the left middle finger, and as the deck is pulled apart, the right hand takes the top half of each half of the deck. The top portion of the deck in the right hand is dropped to the table, followed by the bottom portion of the deck in the left hand. Then the remaining cards in the right hand and the remaining cards in the left hand. This returns the cards to their original order. The most common shuffling technique is riffle shuffling, cascading the cards together alternately from right and left hands. It's more difficult to cheat with this shuffle, but don't be fooled, it's done all the time. This riffle shuffle will retain a small group of cards on top of the deck, in this case, the four kings. As always with a riffle shuffle, the deck is cut in two, and as the deck is riffled together, it is simply done lopsided enough that the four kings remain on top of the deck in each shuffle. Then, with an ace of clubs cut, the cards are separated and riffle shuffled together once more, again with four kings remaining on top. The shuffle is completed with a nine of clubs cut. This looks like a perfectly legitimate shuffle, but not a single card will be out of place when the shuffle is completed. From the cheater's angle, you can see that the cards are riffled together and two cards are put on top of the pack from the right hand. Then, as the cheater appears to push the cards together, he actually takes the deck apart and pushes the left half under only the top two cards on the right. He holds a break at the center of the deck and cuts the cards again. The cards are shuffled in exactly the same way a second time, but this time the top two cards are in the left hand. They are replaced to the right side of the deck as it is pushed back together. Now this looks like an honest and thorough riffle shuffle, but not a single card is out of place. It's called a strip out shuffle because half of the deck is pulled through the other half, stripping the cards from the deck. The cards are shuffled together and with the little fingers of each hand, the cards are actually pushed through each other. The right hand pulls the cards apart again, stripping them out from behind and then cutting the deck to the top. A break is held with the left thumb, and then the shuffle is completed with the eight of clubs cut. This is the same shuffle again, pushing the cards through each other and separating them into two halves as they were at the start of the shuffle. This time, the shuffle is completed with the king of clubs cut. This demonstrates a strip out shuffle with a jack of clubs cut. cards are stripped through each other, pulled out from the back and then dropped to the table by bringing small groups of cards from the bottom of the deck. The strip out shuffle can also be used with a seven of clubs cut.
The lesson here is that there is no one way to catch a cheater. He might combine any number of false shuffles and false cuts to obtain his objective. Remember, it's very likely he will play honestly most of the night, waiting for the stakes to be high enough and the opportunity to be right. So if you find him to be honest most of the time, keep on watching. This shuffle will restore the cards to their original order with one cut. Instead of cutting the deck to the right as he has done all night, the cheater this time cuts the top half to the left. He then riffle shuffles and pushes them through, stripping them out from behind. Now, when he cuts the right half on top of the left, he has restored the card's order. This is called the Pharaoh Shuffle. It laces the cards up every other card. It is a great weapon for stacking the deck. In this method, the cards are laced up, stripped out from the back, and the eight of clubs cut is used to complete the shuffle. This may be the most difficult and most risky shuffle that a cheater will attempt. The cards are not only riffled together, but bridged and allowed to fall together. Even with that, the cheater maintains control of both halves, pushes them through each other and strips the cards out. The eight of clubs, once again, completes the shuffle. This would never be used by a cheater in an actual card game. It's too showy and would obviously expose him as an expert. It's not only a one-handed shuffle, but also a strip out, retaining the original order of the deck. The cards are separated with the index finger, slid into the fingers with the middle finger on top of the deck. The cards are squeezed and riffled into each other. As they are riffled, the cards are jogged forward and the index finger and little finger break the deck into a V so that the index finger and the thumb can strip out the deck. The cards are then cut one-handed back to the top. Nullifying the cut is a crucial tool in the cheater's repertoire. Once he has false shuffled and false cut and retained control of several cards or even the whole deck, it means nothing if he can't nullify the cut. After the shuffle, the deck is cut. The cheater picks up the bottom half of the deck and with his other hand moving forward as a cover, hops the cards over the top of the deck and slides them underneath. The move can be seen clearly from underneath as Mr. Turner performs the hop on a glass top table. It's extremely difficult for a cheater to operate on a smooth surface and this shows the level of perfection that Mr. Turner has achieved. This is very similar, but the opposite hand is not used as a cover. The bottom of the deck is picked up and hopped over and then quickly slid under the top of the deck. This maneuver takes advantage of another diversion anteing a chip into the pot. The cut is actually completed and the cards are brought in front of the dealer. But with his right thumb, he's held a break in the cards. And when he throws the chip into the pot, he splits the deck and pulls the bottom half back on top with his other hand helping to cover the move.
Here again, the cut is completed with the top half of the deck stepped forward. When the cards are brought in front of the dealer, he picks up the top half as he brushes his ante to the pot with the back of his hand. When he brings them back to the deck, he slides the cards under the deck. This time, the bottom cards are slid under the top half from in front without hopping over the deck. It's done very quickly and is almost impossible to detect. This is a method of reversing the cut by shifting the cards after the cheater has picked up the deck to deal. The cards are legitimately cut but the bottom half is outjogged when it's put on top of the deck. Then the fingers of the left hand pull down the bottom half of the deck and the top half is pivoted beneath it, reversing the cut. This is a one-handed shift. It's different from the standard one-handed cut because it can even be performed when the cards are held upside down. The deck is held with the thumb and index finger and the little finger splits the deck and pivots the bottom half around and places it on top. This time, the deck is cut and the cards are stepped forward and the break is maintained with the index finger. When the right hands come together to square the deck, the left hand shifts the two halves. This can be seen clearly from underneath. In games where cash is on the table, the eight of spades shift can be made using the bills as a cover to mask the action of the hands as the cut is nullified. Again, the shift uses a diversion, pulling the sleeves back. Attention is directed to the cuffs and the deck is covered by the right arm while the eight of spades shift is performed. Some players will slide the cards to the edge of the table as though they need to get the cards off the table in order to pick them up. Instead, they use the tabletop as a mask to do the shift. The shift technique is the eight of spades shift. Again, the chips come into play. The cards are cut and stepped forward when the deck is put back together. The left thumb and the index finger hold the top half of the deck. The right hand takes the bottom half of the deck and brushes the ante into the center of the table. Then the cards in the right hand are returned to the top of the deck. This is the same as the three of spades shift except that the cards are held end to end. The deck is cut and the step is made to the left. In the left hand, the thumb and the index finger hold the top half of the deck. The right hand takes the bottom cards and brushes the ante to the pot, then puts the cards on top of the deck.
this is pure diversion and misdirection. The cards are cut and the cheater picks up the bottom half and places it in his left hand. Then he throws in his ante and picks up the top half of the deck, putting it back on top. With the diversion of the ante, it's difficult for the players to keep track of the cut. This is a maneuver that shows the cheater can be less than an expert at cards. He appears to have sloppily left a few cards on the table when he picks up the deck. Then, with the deck in his left hand, he takes the bottom half of the deck back to the table to pick up the dropped cards. When he puts the deck back together, he puts the cards on top of the deck, nullifying the cut. The cards are cut, step to the left, and as they are placed into the left hand, the right index finger pushes the top half to the left, and in squaring up the deck, the right hand pulls the bottom half to the top of the deck. The object here is not to nullify the cut, but to retain control of a small group of cards. In this case, the cheater's keeping control of the four aces. When he puts the deck back together, he leaves the aces on the table as if by mistake. Noticing his mistake, he puts the cards on the bottom of the deck. The object here is the same, but the entire bottom half of the deck is picked up the right thumb makes a break separating the bottom cards from the deck, and then the cards are put together. The bottom cards are slid under the deck. The cheater can also nullify the cut using crimps or bridges. This makes it easy to spot the place where the cheater wants the cards cut. For our purposes, the crimps are exaggerated to make them obvious to the viewer. A cheater would never be this obvious. This crimp is put in during an overhand shuffle, similar to the King of Hearts shuffle. The difference is that the in jog is just one card, and the rest of the deck is shuffled squarely. Then the deck is squared up. The in jogged card is bent down very slightly. If the cheater has an accomplice at the table, the crimp is foolproof. Even without a partner, the cards will usually be cut at the crimp unknowingly. This time, as the cheater gives the deck one final cut after the shuffle, with the left index finger curled beneath the deck, the little finger and the middle finger squeeze the deck under the cover of the right hand. This puts a bridge in the deck. This time the same bridge is put in but only a small group of cards is bridged as it is taken from the bottom. Then another group of cards is placed on top without bridging it. If the cheater really wants to retain control of a small group of cards, what better way than to remove them from the deck altogether before it's cut? That's palming. Here, the desired cards are taken out with the left hand between the index finger and the palm as the cards are passed to be cut. When the cut is completed, 
they are placed back in the left hand, putting the palmed cards on the bottom. If you missed it, watch from underneath the glass table. This time the cards are palmed by using the little finger of the left hand. The right thumb retains a break and the cards are pivoted into the palm with the left little finger. When the cut is completed, the cards are pivoted back into the deck, squaring it up. This time, the cards are palmed at the conclusion of the riffle shuffle. As the cards are pushed together, he holds a break with his right thumb and pushes the cards to be palmed into the left hand. The left little finger then pivots the cards into the palm and waits for the cut. This time the desired cards are on top of the deck and they are palmed into the right hand. The left ring finger pushes the cards to be palmed and the left little finger pivots them into the right palm. After the cards are cut, the hands are brought together to square the deck and the aces are put back on top. Stacking the deck is fundamental to the cheater's craft. It requires an uncommon knowledge of the game and of the mathematics of the deal. The cheater also needs a deft touch in shuffling. Mr. Turner does this as well as anyone in the world. In games like Pinochle, cards are dealt out in groups rather than one at a time. This makes it easy for the cheater to stack the deck in his favor. With an overhand shuffle, the cheater has his cards on top of the deck. He thumbs off four cards, one at a time, on top of his cards, and then in-jogs the next group of cards and shuffles the rest of the deck. He then uses the King of Hearts false shuffle to get back to the top of the deck. When the cards are dealt, his opponent gets the first four cards. The cheater gets the four aces. Now the game is bridge. The cheater has the ace of hearts on top of the deck and the ace of spades on the bottom. He starts with the first move of the queen of hearts false shuffle, then thumbs three cards into his left hand one at a time. The next group of cards is in jog and the queen of hearts false shuffle is completed. As the cards are dealt, the first card the dealer gets is the fourth card the ace of hearts, and the dealer also gets the bottom card, the ace of spades. Now it's a six-handed game of poker using a riffle shuffle. The cheater starts with all four aces on top of the deck, and by the time the cards are dealt, the aces are every sixth card so that he can deal them to himself. It's easier to see with the aces face up. First, the cheater shuffles five cards between the third and fourth ace. In the second shuffle, five cards are shuffled between the second and third aces, and the dealer 
puts nine cards on top of the deck. The third shuffle puts five cards between the first and second ace and the dealer puts 14 cards on top. Then the eight of clubs and nine of clubs false cuts. Finally, he shuffles with the king of diamonds false shuffle. And when the cards are dealt out, every six card goes to the dealer and each one is an ace. When the dealer asks for a new deck, it's easy for him to stack the deck for a straight flush. The game is ten-handed Texas Hold'em. Two cards are dealt to each player. A card is burned. Three are flopped face up. Another card is burned. A fourth card is flopped. A card is burned and a fifth card is flopped. Each player plays his hand and the three face-up cards. And the cheater, the dealer, has the straight flush. With the flush face-up, it's easier to watch the cheater's moves. In the first shuffle, one card is shuffled between the second and third cards of the flush. Four cards are shuffled between the first and second cards. The second shuffle puts five cards anywhere between the second and fifth cards of the flush. The deck is cut with the eight of clubs false cut. The third shuffle puts five cards from the dealer's left on top of the top 15 cards. Then the nine of clubs false cut. The final shuffle is the king of diamonds false shuffle, putting five cards on top. When the cards are dealt, the cheater has his straight flush without even dealing fourth and fifth street. Now four players are in the game. It could be poker, it could be bridge. The cheater will control the aces, and when the cards are dealt, all four aces will find their way to his hand. The shuffle starts with the four aces on top of the deck. The stack uses the six of diamonds, strip out, false, riffle, shuffle, and a crimp. On the first cut, the bottom card is crimped, and a small group of cards are placed on top of the four aces. The first shuffle uses the six of diamonds, strip out, false, shuffle. The second shuffle must be a faro shuffle with every card interlacing with the cards from the other half of the deck. The third shuffle is a six of diamonds strip out. The fourth must be a faro shuffle.
The cards are then cut to the crimp, either by the cheater or by an accomplice. This puts the stacked portion of the deck back on top, with an ace in every fourth position. This is a gin rummy player's dream. Four aces, four queens, and three tens. Again, the cheater uses a crimp and a faro shuffle. He can use a variety of methods to get his gin hand to the top of the deck. The simplest is to keep track of the cards as he collects them to deal. He can pick up the cards from the table in the order that he wants them without drawing attention to himself. Once he has them, he has to stack the deck so that he can deal them to himself. The stack starts by crimping the bottom card and cutting a small group of cards to the top of the deck. The first three shuffles are the seven of diamonds false shuffles. The last shuffle is an honest pharaoh shuffle. The cheater then passes the cards to be cut and in all probability, the opponent will unknowingly cut to the crimp. Even after the deal, the cheater has the opportunity to control the game. Watch as he switches his down card, the ace of spades. He has palmed a card from the deck and simply holds it until he is ready to use it. As he lifts his down card with his left hand and looks at it, he switches it for the palmed card in his right hand, giving himself a pair and taking away an ace. This time the game is seven card stud. The cheater replaces his three down cards with three aces he's put on the bottom of the deck. The little finger of his left hand holds a break above the bottom three cards. After the last down card is dealt, he brings his left hand over the deck and the right thumb releases the bottom three cards, dropping the aces to the table. He puts the deck over his original three down cards and takes them away. Now the cheater has an accomplice at the table and has two hands to work from in draw poker. Using prearranged signals, the cheater asks his partner if he has an ace or a king to help his hand. The partner lays the cards out as if to ask for two cards in the draw. The cheater palms the two cards he is discarding and he appears to push his accomplice's cards away. Actually, he's pushed his cards underneath the ace and the king, picking them up and dropping his discards. The dealer's left with a full house. If the game is casual and the discards are not gathered up immediately after the deal, it's easy for the cheater to build a hand from the table. To do this, he actually discards the cards he wants to keep. In the draw, he picks up two cards that will help his hand. When he picks up the cards, he appears to want to discard and puts them with the other player's discards. He switches his discards for the three worthless cards in his hand. Again, the cheater gets a full house. Another method of switching cards is for the cheater to deal himself extra cards. Here he's placed three aces on the bottom of the deck. He deals five cards for heads up poker. And as he sets the deck down, he steals the aces from the bottom. He looks at his hand and palms off three cards, placing them on top of the deck as he sets it down.
Let's take a look at that now from under the table. Just getting one extra card in the deal will give the cheater a 20% advantage in building a poker hand. As the cards are dealt out, the left hand pivots one or two cards into the left palm. The deck is set down and the dealt cards are put together with the palmed cards. The cheater will use the best hand. During the deal, the cheater can steal extra cards. Watch carefully as he deals the third and fourth cards. He's actually giving himself two cards each time instead of one. Watch now from under the table as he deals himself extra cards and splits them to reveal them to the camera. In games like blackjack, one card can make the difference between winning and losing. The cheater will peek at cards as he deals to give himself an advantage. Usually, a peek is used along with a second deal, which we will get into a little bit later. As the cheater deals the cards face up in blackjack, he pauses for an instant with a face up card covering the deck. As he does, he bubbles the next card so that he can get a look at the upper right corner to see the pip. Here, a peak is exaggerated to make it obvious to the camera. Here's another method of peaking in blackjack. When the dealer has a face card or an ace showing in blackjack, he looks at his down card. As he does, he turns the deck over in his left hand and in an instant pushes out the next card to be dealt so that he can peek at it behind the cover of his dealt cards. This time in the process of squaring the deck, the cheater peeks at the bottom card. The fingers of the left hand bow the bottom card and as the deck is squared, the right thumb pulls the bottom card up over the back of the deck. If the cheater has a partner at the table, he can gesture with the deck, asking his partner if he wants a card in draw poker or a hit in blackjack. As he does, he pushes the top card, exposing it to his partner between the middle and ring fingers. Cheaters have been known to try to cheat a casino by stealing cards and switching them for the cards dealt them. In this case, the cheater's been dealt a 16, but he has a blackjack tucked away in his right palm. As the cheater looks at his cards, he slides his palmed cards under the two on the table and switches them. The player on the dealer's left has a blackjack. As the dealer gathers the cards, he leaves these two on the bottom of the deck. At the end of play, he will have control of the blackjack and be able to stack. So the first hand dealt the house in the new shuffle will be a blackjack.
To keep this blackjack on the bottom in subsequent hands, he holds a break with his little finger and slides other cards over the bottom too as he gathers up the cards. This is called rolling the deck. With an ace and a face card on the table, the cheater gathers them up so that one of them is the second card and the other the fourth card. These cards are placed on the bottom of the deck and the next hand is dealt. As the cheater picks up this hand, he has turned his left hand over and scoops the cards up to the top of the deck. When he turns his hand over and deals, the same four cards that were played in the first hand are dealt out again, with the cheater getting the blackjack. The player has a 20, the cheater has a 17 and cannot take a hit. During the deal, the cheater used the jack of hearts ace of spades peak to find the card that will help him. Now he's got a four on top of the deck. So he looks at his down card. He appears to casually flip it with the top card of the deck. What he actually does is turn over the four, allowing himself a hit and playing the seven, winning the hand. Again, the player has 20, the cheater has 17, and has to stay. This time, he uses his hand holding the deck to flip over his down card. What he actually does is pick up the seven on the table and drops the four that's on the top of the deck. Another winner. Second dealing is used with marked cards. When the dealer sees a card he wants on top of the deck, he deals seconds until he can deal to his own hand. Seconds are also used with peaks, when a desired card is found or with a stacked deck. It's easy to spot an amateur second dealer. Watch how the deck is held. If the hand surrounds the deck with the index finger on top, watch out. If he rocks the deck up and down, bringing the top of the deck above the player's sight line, it's a tip-off that he's dealing seconds. If the right thumb goes to the top of the deck and strikes the deck, he's pulling the second card out. If you watch closely, you can see the second card emerge from the top left corner of the deck. This second is much harder to spot and more difficult to do. With the queen on top, the thumb pushes two cards over as one. And as the right thumb comes to take the card, the top card is pulled back and the second card is dealt. This time, the deck is held with the left thumb on the side of the deck. The action is the same. Two cards are pushed out as one. The top card is drawn back and the second card is pulled out and dealt. This is a second for stud poker. Again, two cards are pushed out and the second card is dealt. As it's brought from the deck, it's flipped over face up, showing the card to the player first.
This time, the index finger, middle finger, and the thumb of the right hand are on the middle of the deck. And as the second card is pulled out, it's dealt face up, showing the card to the dealer first. As before, the deck is held in the same position, and the top two cards are pushed over as one. The middle finger of the right hand takes the second card and the left thumb pulls back the top card. The second card is pivoted as it is turned face up and dealt. This is a very deceptive second deal. With the left thumb along the side of the deck in a more or less relaxed grip, two cards are pushed out. The second card is taken and dealt face up, showing the card to the player first. Again, the dealer is using a relaxed grip with his left thumb along the side of the deck. He pushes two cards to the right. The right hand takes the second card as the top card is pulled back. And this time, the cards are dealt out face up, showing the face of the card to the dealer first. Here's another relaxed second grip. This time the right hand brings the second out to the side of the deck. The cheater is using his thumb and ring finger to pull the card out and pivot it face up toward the dealer. This time again, with a relaxed grip, the right hand pulls the card out from the side and the bottom edge of the deck, pivots them, and deals the second face up. The lesson here is that a cheater can use a variety of deals to mask the fact that he is taking a second. This may be the most difficult second deal to accomplish. Notice that the top card virtually does not move as the second card is taken from beneath it and dealt out. It takes a real professional to deal this second. In fact, it takes a real professional to detect that this is a second being dealt. In casual games, one-handed deals are permitted. You'll never see it at a casino. But just because he is only using one hand doesn't mean that he isn't dealing seconds. Just as with a two-handed second, two cards are pushed over as one. As the left hand turns over, the top card is pulled back, letting the second fall to the table. The same one-handed second deal is used, but the second is dealt out face down instead of face up. Watch as the top card is pulled back and held with the thumb so that the second just falls to the table.
This is an odd one-handed second. The left thumb gets a break under the second card. The thumb turns down, pivots the second out to the top of the deck, and deals the card. This is a flashy second, and it isn't likely to be used by a cheat who is trying to look like a novice. If he's established his reputation with cards, this second could be used without drawing too much suspicion. The deck is held in the relaxed grip with the left thumb along the side of the deck. Two cards are pushed over. The right thumb pulls the second card straight out to the side and then pivots the card face up on top of the deck. Then the card is casually tossed to the player. The aces have been shuffled to every fourth position in the deck. And to demonstrate this deal, we've put the aces face up. The cheater deals a five-handed game of five-card draw. He plans to control the aces by dealing seconds, and he'll get all four of them. Now remember that the aces are every fourth card. So to get the aces into his hand, the dealer has to deal more and more seconds as the deal progresses. Now the game is bridge. The cheater has shuffled the deck so that the ace of hearts is the eighth card and the ace of spades is the fourth card. Even though the deck is cut, the cheater can control these two aces and give them to whichever player he chooses. He holds a break with his little finger at the spot where the deck is cut. This way he knows when the top of the deck comes up again. As soon as it does, he deals seconds until he is able to place the aces. In this case, he gives himself the aces. Looking at the deal again, with the aces face up, you can see that it's important for the cheater to keep track of the spot where the deck is cut. He holds that spot by separating the cards very slightly with the little finger of his left hand. Because of the cut, the aces may not be in a position for him to get them into his own hand with a straight deal. So, when he gets to the top of the deck, he counts and he deals seconds until he can deal them to himself. In some games, the control of just one card can give the dealer a tremendous advantage. In this deal, the cheater will control two cards, the ace and the king of spades. They were gathered from the previous hand and shuffled to the fifth and sixth positions in the deck. The game is seven card stud. High spade in the hole splits the pot. The deck is cut and once again the dealer holds a break with a little finger of his left hand. He deals out five hands and after two rounds one or more players fold. Doesn't matter to the cheater. When he identifies the king of spades he starts to deal seconds giving it to the player to his left. The player with the king will bet the pot up because he figures to have the high spade. But the cheater has the ace of spades and at least half of the pot. The four aces are on top of the deck. Using pharaoh shuffles and strip outs, the aces are shuffled to every fourth position. The fourth, the eighth, the twelfth, and the sixteenth cards. The deck is cut and again a break is held with the left little finger. Five hands of seven card stud will be dealt. Now the cheater takes advantage of the first round of betting to create a little diversion and perform a shift nullifying the cut. The aces are again in play at every fourth position. It doesn't matter to him how many players fold and how many stay. By dealing seconds, he can always have the aces.
With the four kings on top of the deck, two hands are dealt. On the first deal, the cheater pushes over five cards with the left thumb and the right thumb and middle finger pivot out the fifth card and push the top four cards back flush with the deck. The fifth is dealt. The next card is the top card, a king, dealt to the player. The same thing is done again, this time dealing a fourth and giving himself a king off the top. Then a third and a king for himself. The fourth deal is a second and then the final king for himself. The cheater will never really deal a hand this way. It's being demonstrated here to show the technique, but it would be too risky to deal fifths, fourths, thirds, and seconds in one hand. The dealer would stack the deck more carefully. Again, with the four kings on top of the deck, the cheater deals a fifth, pushing out five cards, pulling out the fifth, and dealing it face up. He deals himself the king from the top of the deck face up. Then a fourth face up, a king to himself, a third face up, a king to himself, a second face up, and the final king. With the four kings on top of the deck, the middle finger of the right hand pivots the fifth card out of the deck, bringing the card toward the dealer and flipping it out to the player, face up. As you watch this in slow motion, you can see the dealer's action. Remember that a cheater will deal a third, fourth, or fifth to deal just one card and retain three or four or five on top of the deck. He wouldn't deal a full hand of thirds, fourths, or fifths. Who hasn't seen an old western with a cowboy in a bar accusing a card shark of dealing off the bottom of the deck? In the movies, it's usually an invitation to a gunfight. In a real card game, you can be sure bottom dealers will take your money. Watch as the cheater gives his accomplice the four kings. Bottom dealing, while well known, is one of the most difficult techniques that a cheater can master. A bottom dealer will also need a method of false shuffling and nullifying the cut so that he can get his cards on the bottom of the deck and leave them there. To spot a bottom dealer, watch for what's called a finger flash. As he deals to his own hand, the knuckles of the left hand can be seen moving so the right hand can get at the bottom card and deal it out. This is even more apparent as you look at the deal close up. The middle and ring fingers straighten out so the bottom card can be dealt. Another sign of bottom dealing to watch for is a dealer who snaps the card to the table. It's fast, but it's noticeable. The bottom dealer who's really perfected his craft won't tip off his move with a finger flash. Watch as he deals the aces to himself and notice that the left fingers don't straighten out. From under the table, you can see the maneuver as the bottom card is taken from between the index finger and the middle finger with the right index finger and thumb. The four aces are on the bottom of the deck. The four kings are on the top. The cheater is going to deal every other card from the bottom. With his opponent having the four kings, the cheater can be assured the player will stay in the game and bet heavily. That makes the win more lucrative when the cheater turns up four aces. From under the table, you can see the deal. 
Also notice the cheater's rhythm as he deals the cards out. He doesn't hesitate as he brings the cards off the bottom. The bottom cards are dealt as smoothly as the top ones. And to keep his rhythm absolutely the same, he even deals the meaningless fifth card from the bottom. This deal illustrates the need for a bottom dealer to have more than one skill. Three aces and two kings are on the bottom of the deck. A third king is on top. The cheater deals occasional bottoms to the first player and himself, so that the first player has the sucker hand, the three kings. The cheater has the three aces and wins. The cheater would have put the aces and kings into position as he gathered the cards up to shuffle. Then he would use false shuffles and nullify the cut to keep his cards in place. From below, notice that as the cards are dealt around, the first king honestly goes to the first player. In the second round, the first card dealt is a bottom. The rest are from the top. The third round, the first card is a bottom, and the dealer gives himself a bottom. In the fourth and fifth rounds, the dealer deals honestly to the players and deals bottoms to himself. The first player has three kings. The dealer has three aces. This time the game is stud poker. Three aces are on the bottom of the deck. And in the first round, the dealer gives himself an ace from the bottom. In the next two rounds, he gives himself aces again and deals them not only from the bottom, but from the back of the deck, dealing them out face up. As we look at this from below the table, all four aces are on the bottom. Even from this angle, it's almost impossible to see this bottom being dealt. The right thumb takes the card at the lower right corner of the deck. Three aces are on the bottom. The first cards are dealt around face down. As the cards are dealt face up in the second round, the right thumb deals the card to show it to the player first. As he deals bottoms this way, the right middle finger pulls out the bottom and turns it face up. The dealer gets the three aces. Looking directly at the bottom of the deck from beneath the table, all four aces have been false shuffled to the bottom. Watch the middle finger of the right hand come between the index and middle fingers of the left hand to get the bottom card. This is a one-handed bottom deal, and the game is stud poker. The other players all get an honest deal, but the dealer gets the aces from the bottom. As the cheater deals to himself, he pushes the top card over as if to deal it but the fingers holding the deck from underneath release the bottom card as the left hand is turned palm down. A cheater could only get away with this bottom deal in a very loose game. As he deals the stud cards face up, he flips them from the deck. The index and middle fingers of the right hand take the card, turn it face up on top of the deck, and the left hand deals the card.
The move looks exactly the same when the bottom is dealt. This is one of the few maneuvers in which the cheater will change his technique to deal to himself. He deals to other players with two hands, but just uses one hand to deal his own card. He makes it look like a very casual move, but it's not only a different deal, it's a bottom deal. The fingers of the left hand pivot the card from the bottom, and the index and middle fingers grab it and clear the bottom of the deck putting the card on top. This illustrates the cheater's moves as he deals continuous bottoms. The left thumb pushes the top card out as if to be dealt, and as the right middle finger takes the bottom card from between the index and middle fingers of the left hand, the top card is withdrawn. It would be rare to deal continuous bottoms. It's being done here as an illustration. A cheater wants to deal honestly as often as he can so that the players won't suspect him. So as you watch for cheating, remember, you have to watch every shuffle, every cut, every card that's dealt. You never know when the cheater will decide to strike. Yes, it's possible to deal from the middle of the deck, but this is one of the most difficult slights to perform with a deck of cards. When a cheater can deal from the middle, he doesn't need to nullify the cut and he doesn't need an accomplice at the table. With the queens in the center of the deck, the dealer takes them with his right hand. The fingers of the left hand pivot the card out so the dealer doesn't have to break his dealing rhythm with his right hand. With the queens face up, watch from under the table. The cheater holds a break at the cut and then squares the pack. He pulls the queen out with the ring finger and the little finger of the left hand. This angle shows the maneuver even more clearly. Even when the cards are being dealt face up in stud poker, the cheater can still deal from the middle, taking the middle card from the lower right hand corner of the deck with the right hand palm down. As with seconds and bottom deals, a middle dealer can deal one-handed in a casual game. Any one-handed deal is a pretty good tip-off that the dealer knows his way around a card table and the players should beware. Every finger in the left hand gets involved in dealing a one-handed middle. The ring finger and the little finger pinch it out from the center. The index finger and the middle finger pivot the card around to the front of the deck and the thumb delivers it to the player. Players should master the technique for properly shuffling, cutting, and dealing cards, and then insist that every player at the table use the same technique. It's your best protection, and that's why we're demonstrating it again. With the cards on the table, riffle shuffle, and cut one third of the deck to the top. The procedure is repeated several times. No player can see any of the cards this way. There's no peeking, no strip outs, no false cuts, no palming and no stacking the deck. When the deck is cut, the joker is used to mark the spot and the deck is cut with the joker on the bottom. 
This eliminates false cuts, crimps, and all the methods of nullifying the cut. To deal, place the deck on the table, put the left index finger on top of the deck, holding the deck with the thumb and middle finger. There will be no seconds, no bottoms, and certainly no middle deals. Shuffling, cutting, and dealing in this way will give you a chance in games of chance. Well, this concludes our series on card cheating. Remember, these tapes are not to teach you how to cheat, but to keep you from being cheated. Hope you've enjoyed the series. Any up, gentlemen.